Are you finding it difficult to switch chords smoothly on the guitar? Does it feel like your chord transitions are slow and your strumming hand struggles to keep up? Well, don't worry, because in today's lesson, I've got you covered. I'm going to share some essential tips and tricks, some play along exercises, including a special bonus tip to help you overcome these hurdles. Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Jeff Davis. I'm here to help you learn the guitar funner and faster. Let's grab our guitars, let's dive in. So to get good at strumming, it's important to make a point of calling out our weaknesses, but also having a plan on getting better at them. From my teaching experience, I've identified three common struggles that students have and keep them from effortless strumming. The first one is maintaining a consistent rhythm. That means keeping a consistent strum pattern going over time. Two, Handling complex patterns, that is managing patterns that have a combination of down and up strokes and especially syncopation. And number three, coordinating both hands together with chord changes. That means synchronizing your hands, particularly when the left hand feels sluggish when moving between chords. So what are some effective ways of practicing strumming? Well, the best way of practicing strumming is to focus on, and this is the first tip of the day, separate the hands and focus on one hand at a time. So for the very first exercise, we're gonna practice just strumming in the right hand. We're gonna practice strumming quarter notes, then eighth notes. We're gonna count after four, and we're gonna play. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. Just keeping it really loose, right? Two, three, Four. One more time. One, two, three, four. Now it's really important, as I mentioned, keep your wrist really loose. We don't want a stiff arm. That's how tension builds up in the arm and that makes it more difficult for us to play, all right? Let's try the down up strum or we're gonna do what are called eighth notes. And we're gonna do four of those in a measure. And we're gonna count to four, but remember how we count eighth notes. One and two and once again with this hand muted and this root this wrist really loose we're going to count and play one two three four. Oh, one and two and three and four and again one and two and three and four and it's important to know that when we strum and especially when we're doing downs and ups the up strum, we're going to be hitting less strings than we would on the way down. So it's not going to be a robot strum where your arm is so stiff that you're going, it's not that. It's loose. I'm hitting maybe 80% of the strings on the way down and maybe 20 on the way up. So a number something like that, something close to that. But we don't want a really stiff, rigid arm hitting every single string on the way up and the way down and every single string on the way up. Keep it really loose. All right, let's focus on that left hand. For this, I'm gonna put my pick. I'm gonna take my pick and just put it down. I don't need it right now. We're gonna be working on a few different chords today for an exercise I have. Um, we're gonna be using a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord. Let's talk about the G chord. Remember how this looks? Remember what this chord looks like? Two, one, and three. And then we're gonna be using a C chord. Do you remember the C chord? One, two, and three. And then we're gonna be using the D chord. Do you remember the D chord? One, two, and three. All right, with this exercise, we're gonna be practicing moving left hand only, G to C, C to G, G to D. That's the order. Now, what I want you to focus on with this, which is the hardest thing to do when we're switching, and here's the big, the big important thing about this, is to make sure when you're switching chords, you do not assemble a chord. We don't want to put first, second, and third down. We want them all to go down at the same time, if possible, right? So when we're playing the G chord, let's start off with that. Let's switch to the C chord. And when you're switching, what I want you to avoid is assembling it one finger at a time. We're just going to what it, use what I like to call lift, move, press. Okay, ready, go. We're on G. Lift, move, press to C. We're gonna go back to G. Lift, move, press on G. Now we're gonna go to D. Lift, move, press, to D. Now it's important to know this can work with any chord progression you have and I recommend whatever song you're working on, take a little time just to focus on the left hand and all at once switch, not assembling a chord. Practice that chord progression with just the fingers moving all at the same time. All right, moving right along. Now that we've worked on both hands individually, it's time to coordinate them and I wanna bring up something really important. In music, rhythm is more important than hitting exact notes about 100% of the time. 
Top guitarists often use their fretting hand in such a way where they're lagging a little bit behind the strumming hand. So that brings me on to the second tip of the day and the key tip for effortless strumming and that is don't let your fretting hand slow your right hand down. Too often I see students when they're playing patterns, what they do is they'll stop their right hand to get their left hand ready to play. You don't want to do that. This hand should always be moving. When it's always moving, it's keeping the rhythm going regardless if this hand is even where it should be at the time that you need it to play. Let's apply what we learned earlier to the chord progression that we also worked on earlier. G to C, C to G, and G to D. All right. Now what we're going to be practicing is an eighth note strum. We're focusing on keeping those other things in mind that we did when we separated the hands and all at one switch. Right. When we're strumming down and up, we're hitting less strings on the way up than we are the way down. Remember those tips? Let's try this after four. One, two, three, four, G. One, and two, and three, and four. Notice I'm hitting less strings on the way up than I'm on the way down, right? Three, and four, and I'm switching. My left hand switching all at once, I'm not assembling a chord. Try it one more time. Now, it's very interesting to note that a lot of musicians out there cheat, especially when they have really complicated chords that they're switching to. And this brings me on to the third and final tip of the day, and that is to use what's called open string strumming. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to play this a bit fast. I'm going to see if you can follow it, see if you can catch what I'm doing. a bit of a different strum there, but did you notice what's happening in the very last up strum of the measure switch, before the measure switch, what I'm doing is I'm playing open strings. So essentially what a lot of guitarists do is they'll go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, open. That very last up of the measure of the pattern, they're playing open strings. That gives them time to switch. So that's what I like to call open string strumming. It is a bit tricky to practice, but I guarantee if you do practice this, this third and final tip will push you right over the edge when it comes to playing effortlessly because it takes the tension out of feeling like you have to switch the chords so fast. Let's try this together, all right? I'm gonna practice that same chord progression. I'm gonna use an eighth note strum. Let's go slow. After four, one, two, three, four, go. One and and here comes that open string strum. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... So when you really hear this up to speed, it dissolves. You don't even hear those open strings. So let me play this faster again. In conclusion, and to sum it up, by practicing these exercises and focusing on separating and coordinating your hands, you're going to see a significant improvement in your strumming. What's more, using open string strumming as a practice tool will help you tackle complex patterns and play in time with your favorite music. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.